everybody. Wow, it has been a really, really long time since I have made a video. So, hello! <laughs> Welcome back. Um, I've been really happy to see that I still have people subscribing even over this enormous break. So thank you for everybody who's new here. Um, this is going to be sort of a two-part. Um, I'm going to share with you a little secret that I use that increases not only my posture and the way that I look, but also gives your body a little bit more space in which to work. Since belly dancing works in the torso so much, it's important to create a lot of space. So I'm going to share with you a way that I actually create room for a little bit more range of motion in my hips, but also in my chest. Um, so I'll include a timestamp or a link to skip the update. If you want to just get to that, you won't hurt my feelings. So look down there. If you are curious about where I've been and why I haven't made a video, then you can watch this part. Um, first off, I will say if I sound a little different, it's because I have invisible aligners on now. They are invisible, but they do affect the way I talk a little bit. Um, when I first had them on, I straight up had a lisp, so it's gotten a lot better since then. So I feel like I sound fairly normal, but it might just be slightly off from my previous videos. So anyway, um, so the main reason, of course, why I have not been making videos is I got married. So that was <laughs> so much fun. It was amazing. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot to do. It was a lot of money. It was a lot of <laughs> everything. <laughs> Any of you who've gotten married, I'm sure you know. Um, I'm super, super lucky. I'm super happy. Thank you, everybody who has sent good wishes. I truly appreciate it. Um, but life is kind of winding back down, getting back to normal for the most part. I'm amazed at how long it took to get back on track. I still feel like I'm playing catch up in a way. But, you know, and I'm used to producing events. I'm used to putting big events together, but it was, of course, on a different level. I did almost everything myself. I had a lot of help, but you know what? We did all of the flowers. We did all of the invitations, all everything that you could go out and hire somebody to do. The only thing that we really hired people for was the photography, the cake, and the rental equipment. And just those three things alone was so much money. Oh my god, it was ridiculous. It cost so much money to get married. I had I knew that, but like really, really doing it and doing it on a budget was still so much money. Um, the venue was my mom's house, and I'm telling you guys, if you can get married at someone's house, do it. <laughs> so it was a lot of work, but it was so worth it and it was so special. I love that I can just walk down to where I got married anytime I want. I can go visit my mom and I can walk down to the river and I can go to the very spot I got married, which is really fun. Um, so yeah, so got married. That's mostly, <laughs> mostly all that has happened. Um, I've only done two performances since getting married and I think that was, I think I actually went four full weeks without performing and pretty much without dancing. So that kind of gives me an interesting thing to talk about now because out of my own experience I can see how important it is to practice regularly. Um, obviously everybody knows that, we all know that, but feeling it for real for the first time in a long, long time. I think the last time I took a break that long was when I was 15 or so. I got a staph infection. One of the reasons why I advocate wearing shoes, which you may have heard me say in my class and in my other video, is because I got a carpet burn on the top of my right foot from doing a Turkish drop. And that got infected and I could not walk. So of course I can't dance either, but I think that was three weeks. And I was a teenager, that makes a big difference. <laughs> so um, being 
progressed into my 20s now. Um, it's very different. So I think it's important to always be appreciative of how very, very lucky we are to dance and how quickly it can all go away. Um, it's not like I came back like I can't dance. It's just that I realized how much I took my fitness for granted. I feel incredibly stiff. I gained 10 pounds, which I wasn't really that worried about because to me, wearing a wedding dress is like more covered than usual. All I had to worry about was my posture and having my shoulders and my arms look nice. I was more worried about my skin than my body or anything like that. So I mean, for me, getting ready for a show, I'm more concerned about my weight and stuff like that. I mean, even 10 pounds, I mean, I've already lost five of it. Um, it's just going from dancing all the time, literally, and eating to sustain my weight and my existence as a dancer, and then taking the same calorie intake, but taking away the dancing, I knew that was gonna happen. So that was fine. But I feel sluggish, I feel heavy, I feel extremely <laughs> unbalanced. I'm amazed at that. And I know some of the balance is actually because of my liners, because it's putting so much pressure on my jaw that it's affecting my ears now. Um, I actually kind of got scared a day ago, be like two days ago or a day ago, because I fell over in my house. I got vertigo so bad that I just, I was walking along, didn't feel it coming on at all, just whoop, just down on the floor. Super confused for a minute there. It didn't hurt myself or anything, it just fell down. So that, that was weird, but I believe that is pressure and tension in my jaw, so I've been massaging ugh, my jaw every day. But, um, yeah, so if you have ever been injured or if you've taken a long break, I'm sure you know how fast you can lose your progress from dancing. But so that was interesting, and I knew that it would happen. But I know um, the first time I performed back after the four week break was at Red Dragon. And, you know, I, it's a long set, it's 20 minutes, but I kind of approached it with like, oh yeah, I'll be a little rusty, I'll be a little out of shape, but it'll be okay. I do it all the time. I was definitely, definitely out of breath. Um, I purposefully chose a slower song for my opening than normal so that I could ease into it. And admittedly, I spent a little bit more time doing audience interaction and tipping than I normally do. So I kind of knew to scale it back a little bit because I know my stamina and my endurance are not going to be at my normal level. However, um, one week after coming back from, to class, so I think two weeks after I returned to dancing in general, um, we had the Najum Summer Hoff Club, which was super fun, and I was so happy to perform with my students. And that was mainly what I'm focused on. When I'm performing with the group, that is what I focus on. Of course, I want to do my best in a solo, but that's where my energy is. And there was less of my mental energy to go around because I was still coming out of all of this wedding stuff and trying to get my house in order and get caught up on everything that I was ignoring during the wedding and the honeymoon. So <laughs> I did prepare for the solo and I did practice, but the solo and the sword duet absolutely kicked my butt. And I don't think I have ever felt down on myself after a performance. Like, very, very rarely. Like, if I could really... <laughs> I don't even know. I've had several things happen on stage, but, you know, if you fall or if you're having, like, what feels like an asthma attack, I don't know. It's not the same as just generally doing poorly, and I felt like I generally did poorly. Um, I was expecting a little bit more from myself. But in hindsight, I shouldn't have. In hindsight, I should have known that doing a very difficult sword dance maybe wasn't the best idea. You know, I should have eased back into things a little bit more. So it wasn't terrible. Watching the video, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but it was not as good as the original performance. Um, so all in all, what I really wanted to share with you guys today was just, you know, if you're dancing, just 
keep dancing. <laughs> even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just a few minutes every day, if you keep your um, respiratory stamina up, you keep your strength up, you keep your balance up, and you keep your your general body awareness. That is so, so important. Um, so yeah, I don't think I will be taking a break that long again. Now, I mean, my students, you will know, I do take sometimes month long breaks from class, but usually if I take a break in the summer, I'm producing a show or producing one and being involved in others. So even though I'm not teaching, I am still rehearsing. Sometimes I'm dancing more on a class break than I am during class because I have extra rehearsals and there's time in the evening to do that, to work on choreography, to rehearse, to do all these different things. So usually if I take a month break in the summer, we're working super crazy hard because um, summer is slow. People don't like dancing in the summer then they've got gardening to do and they've got light and stuff like that and they're hot and they're tired and whatever. So summer's usually slow anyway. And then I usually take a, a break around Christmas because let's be honest, most people don't go to dance class right around Christmas. So, <laughs> but there again in Christmas time, I will still dance. I'm usually working on specific Christmas themed numbers, New Year's performances, Christmas performance, doing lots of parties and things like that. So yeah, this is the first time I have ever taken that much time off with no dancing. I think I danced a grand total of three times, like two rehearsals, you know, three, three short rehearsals. That was it. It was crazy. I don't recommend it. So <laughs> I'm back. I'm happy to be back. Happy to be back dancing. Um, happy to be married. Um, I don't know. I guess that was it. So today is just a short gentle video with just a couple of tips to help you look better and dance better. So let's get to that. We're doing a different angle today because my dad is on a hike and he has a tripod, or he has the tripod that I normally borrow to use for this. So I've just got the camera setting up on my entertainment center sound system thing there. So hopefully you can see me okay. What we're going to talk about today is posture in the upper body and zipping in our rib cage. So I'm going to come a little bit closer so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. So first I'm just going to relax. If I'm just slumping around my house, I'm just walking along like this. If I'm dancing, as you would know, in belly dancing we don't want to like suck in the stomach because we want to be fluid through the torso. So all of our like flatness in the abs comes from lengthening. And I'm going to talk to you specifically about zipping the rib cage. Inhale, open through the ribs, close the zip, out, and in. Now try it without the breath. Out, in, out, in. So using the breath helps you because as you inhale, if you're inhaling up into your lungs, you can kind of get the idea of how to expand, which will then give you a greater understanding of how to then contract in. So if I am dancing, I'm going to tuck my hips up a little bit, lift ever so slightly. You don't want to over arch, but I'm going to think of actually lifting my torso higher and then from there, going to squeeze and contract my ribs. So relaxed, contracted, relaxed, pulled in. And what this does is it gives you more curve. And also the biggest advantage to this is that say if you're going to move your hips, say you're gonna do something like a Maya, if I have my chest dropped down and slumping, dropping, the points of my ribs are actually closer physically to my hip bones, especially if I'm tucking my hips up, but I'm not lifting through the rib cage. So we can get this collapsed effect here, which is not what we want. We want to pick up these hip bones ever so slightly so that we have a neutral pelvis, which protects the lower back, 
but we then want to, I'll show you from the side, we then want to come up and in. And here's out, here's in. So it gives you a nicer silhouette, more control over your breath, but it also gives your hips more movement. So let's do a couple exercises together. I want you to relax and try to engage in the normal places for posture. So you would hopefully know lift up, shoulders are down and back, neck is long, etc. But then I want you to think, let's bring the hands to the hips here, let's think lift and squeeze and then relax. Lift, squeeze, relax. <laughs> Lift, squeeze, relax. Now notice I'm not arcing or arching like I would for a chest lift. All I'm doing is making sure that I'm up here rather than down here. So it's thinking of like an elevator coming straight up. So in other words, you can think of elongating through the abs, the transverse, and the obliques. A little bit in the back too. You're going to feel the spinal, spinal erector muscles here in the back. So if we go from relaxed, you might see that those also squeeze. So you want to think of everything as like a, a corset. So you're squeezing in and up. And this, this is what my students have been kind of jokingly referring to as the belly dance Barbie. If you don't do this, then you just, I don't know, just looks normal, boring, everyday, kind of. When you're dancing, you don't want to look like you're just walking through the supermarket, you're beat down, you're having a hard day, you're done, you just want to go home. You don't look like that. You want to look like a beautiful, beautiful, elegant little swan. So you want everything to be long, pulled in, and it's not about looking skinny. Like, don't take that the wrong way. It's not about looking slim or sexy or anything like that. It's just about looking your best and it's about poise. It's about the energy and what you're projecting to the audience and being here projects confidence, poise, grace, and good posture. People just like looking at other people with good posture. So this is just one way to give a good posture and a good body language into your dancing to incorporate into that. Um, it also will help slightly with your breathing because when you're breathing for dance, you want to breathe through your lower belly, through your diaphragm. You don't want to be <laughs> breathing up here. So when you're breathing for dance, you're breathing down here. So when you're zipping up through your chest and your ribs, it's a reminder to breathe here because we are kush, we are engaged up in here. So, um, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, definitely look out for more videos. They are coming. I promise. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. It has been a long time. I know. Um, coming up soon, I think we're going to be doing some layering drills. And we're also going to work on a practice flow so that you can just kind of pop on the video and just get in a quick practice with me. Um, tell me if you have any requests. I'm always looking for suggestions on what to create. Um, also looking at making some Zill videos, so if you want to work with finger symbols, let me know. Feel free to leave a comment or send me a message. I would love to hear from you and let me know if this tip helped for you. Uh, go ahead and like it, subscribe it, you know how YouTube works. Thanks for coming.